excited about making his first real dive that afternoon. Greg had been talking to my parents about diving and all the situations we've done, all the experiences we've had. And he was really excited about going diving. He do the big Velcro one first. We had gone out the weekend before and done a lot of practice. We went through everything I could think of that I had gone through with my certification. Greg has such a great dive, his first dive. We weren't that concerned about his certification. When we got to the bottom, we could not even see Bob and Jason due to the poor visibility. Greg and I decided that we would go about our dive thinking that we would eventually meet up with them. I love to dive in Puget Sound because it's dark, it's soft, the life is very, very quiet and still. There's kind of a mystery to it. I realized that we were close to 75 feet. I didn't want to be that deep with Greg. So I signaled that we were going to go up. He had his buoyancy device in his hand and he was having trouble with his inflator. I looked at Greg's gauge and realized we're in trouble. He has no air left. And then he grabbed my regulator out of my mouth. It took me a moment to get my emergency, get it cleared and get it in my mouth. But we had plenty of air to get us to the surface. I didn't feel we were in any type of a critical situation at all. We were just going to buddy breathe up to the surface. We started kicking. And we were kicking so hard that I was getting cramps in my legs. But we could get nowhere. Greg was too heavy. I was going to ditch his weight belt. Greg let go of me to grab that regulator. I was like a cork shooting out of control to the surface. I had a sensation of Greg on the bottom without air and I knew that he was drowning I knew that when we continue I thought how will I tell his mother what will I say to his mother I couldn't tell his parents that he drowned When Rita Cannell's novice diving partner, Greg, got into trouble and panicked, she ended up shooting toward the surface, out of control, while he remained more than 75 feet under, without air, somewhere on the floor of Puget Sound. Ah! Ah! Rita happened to surface right near Trucks Turkle and two other rescue certified dive masters. She came up so fast that she shot out of the water. She was screaming for help. Oh my God, oh my God, he's going to die. She says he's right below us. He's directly below us. It's 70, 75 feet. He's still down there. You gotta go get him. How much air do you guys have? I didn't have enough air to go back down. But Bill and Ken both told me they had enough air. Go, go. She was almost hysterical. She almost fought me to go back down. I thought, how will I tell his mother? What will I say to his mother? Calm down. I couldn't tell his parents that he drowned. They had to save it. Although trained in rescue diving, Bill Kaloran and Ken Kali'i'a'a had never tried to save someone before. 
I noticed there was some bubbles coming up, so I went straight down and followed his bubbles. And we descended for about 15, 20 feet, and the trail of bubbles just disappeared. And right there I knew that there was no more breathing involved whatsoever by this person down there. I started to get scared. The visibility was really bad, and after I lost track of his bubbles, I was thinking to myself, oh man, how am I gonna find this guy? I was just lucky, I found him right where I landed, on the bottom. His mask was off his face, his eyes was wide open, his skin was real pale, like a picture out of a horror movie. I pushed off the bottom, we didn't move, and tried to kick and we still couldn't move. He just had too much weight on. Ken was struggling to try to bring him up, so I immediately dumped his weight belt. On our way up, I was constantly looking at his face to look for any kind of movement or any kind of sign of consciousness and there was none whatsoever. See the bubbles over there? See? On their way up. They got him! Okay. I knew he wasn't breathing, but I checked to make sure anyway. He's not breathing. He's not breathing. And we started our mouth-to-mouth uh, -mouth count, breathing for him every five seconds. One, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. And as you're counting, you're starting to remove your equipment. 1,001, I was able to get on the boat very quickly. I got inside and I tried to start it. It wouldn't start. I watched what was going on with Greg. You just can't help but almost chant to yourself, like, come on, Greg, you can do it. You can do it, Greg. You can breathe. Come on, buddy, you can breathe. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. A guy in a Zodiac was cruising by. I said, quick, we have a drowned diver. You get him in the boat, get him to shore and call 911. As I was into giving him mouth-to-mouth -mouth several cycles, I noticed he inhaled on his own. Breathing! And that was the best thing I'd ever seen that whole day. Come on, pal. Come on, man. Come on, man. Bill and I just started to yell, breathe, breathe, come on. Don't stop breathing, just breathe, hoping that he could hear us. Hey, hey, over here. Come on. Go. Keep breathing. Go. Keep breathing. Let's go. Keep the boat. All of a sudden, here's this Zodiac. It's like godsend. It was excellent. He was barely breathing. It was real shallow gargly a lot of water was being exhaled and inhaled hey, there were some people on the beach and i just started to scream at them tell them to dial 911 we've got a drowned victim here kept yelling that over and over again district 13 diving accident at kvi beach time now 1305 kon 933 Keep breathing, bud. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. When Trucks finally managed to get the boat started, he picked up Rita's son and her husband, Bob, and headed for shore. Rita was real frantic. Uh, it was really hard to get anything that was too much coherent out of her. And she was saying something about, I killed Greg. Greg is hurt. He's, we ran out of air. I can't believe that. What happened? I vaguely remember them getting on the boat, but I didn't care that it was Bob. I didn't care that it was Jason. I needed to be on the shore with Greg. Right here! Come on, I'm ready! The gentleman in the Zodiac pulled up and said, the paramedics need the dive partner now. And I just kind of threw myself into the boat, and we headed into shore. I'm a nurse at the health center here on the island and I deal with this aid crew on a very regular basis. And once I identified them, I knew that he was in good hands. So I ran to Greg. Greg, 
And I knelt down next to him. I kept saying, Greg, Greg, don't fight. Don't fight, buddy. You're, you're okay. You're not underwater anymore. And he seemed to quiet down. King County paramedic Kathleen Bonner took charge at the scene. This young man had a classic near drowning. He was in acute okay, respiratory distress. He was unable to breathe on his own efficiently. And he was coughing and choking and spitting a lot. So, Rita, how far down were you? He had a fluid in his lungs from the bases up to the clavicles, which is not a good sign. I don't know. I just couldn't handle it, and I turned around, and, um, and I just kept saying, we shouldn't have taken him down. We shouldn't have taken him down. He did not know his age. He didn't even know that he had been diving. It was very clear that he was unable to get oxygen to his brain. Greg was taken to Virginia Mason Medical Center, where he was treated by critical care physician Stephen Kirtland. Okay, has he shown any kind of response? His lungs were severely injured. The amount of oxygen getting into his blood was very small. In addition, there was the concern of an air embolism or an air bubble being trapped uh, in his brain. I'll hold the door for you. Okay. Greg was treated in the hyperbaric chamber for eight hours. How you doing? Hi, Greg. When I got to see Greg, I said, Greg, I am so, so sorry. I didn't mean to leave you. I didn't desert you. <laughs> and, and he gave me the thumbs up and a little nod on the head. And he just kind of reassured me that it was okay. I can't blame Rita for uh, what happened to us. I, I feel that she did her best to get us both to the top. It was just a freak accident. 20-year-old Greg Goldstein was released from the hospital without any permanent injury. Recently, he got a chance to meet the men who saved his life that day. I think the whole scene all the way around was extremely lucky. Do you guys remember this stuff? Oh, wow. Yes, I kind of gave up hope on this. Thank you. It took us three days to find the gear that was left down there. So being able to find Greg as quickly as they could find him was a miracle. I think there's a class starting on Tuesday. You up for it? Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> I'd like people to know diving isn't that dangerous. The only reason that they had a problem is because he wasn't trained. Otherwise, none of this would have even taken place. You don't just give somebody the keys to a plane to fly without a pilot's license. Oh! The same thing goes for scuba. You don't just give somebody a, a cylinder and a, a vest and some fins and a mask and here you go, have fun. Just don't work that way. I will not take anybody down that's not certified, no matter how enthusiastic the people are to You need to really take a look at uh, uh, what is at stake. <laughs> I plan on getting certified as soon as possible. If it wasn't for those divers being there at that point, I don't think I'd be here today at all. I can't say thank you enough for what they had done.